I shot a coyote once, and by the time I got to him, he turned back into my neighbor's dog. They're very crafty. Wiley was a good name for them. Of course, I'm kidding. Welcome back, y'all, to episode three of Quality Turkey Management. Now, I did something this week that is not something I do all the time because, to quote the late, great Charlie Daniels, I ain't asking nobody for nothing if I can't get it on my own. But I'm going away from Charlie and Charlie's philosophy for now because I realize this turkey decline, we can't do it on our own. It takes everybody together working together. I don't want to be the generation of people and for you young folks out there, I want y'all to be able to enjoy turkeys at the level that we did coming through when we were 25, 30 years old. All right, so with that said, not wasting any more time. I called a man who's an expert, uh, a legitimate expert, a biologist who, now here's the thing about biologists. There's great biologists working for the state. The fellow I talked to, he worked for the state for years. Matter of fact, he worked for the state of Georgia through the glory years of turkeys uh, where we had so many that we exported them to Texas to supplement their populations. All right, so he knows what he's talking about. On top of him knowing what he's talking about, he does it for a living, which means if his theories and ideas don't work, it's not like me saying, well, I think we should do this. No, he gets paid for it. So if they don't work, he doesn't get paid. So in the story, they work. Now, with that said, we had a great conversation. We've emailed back and forth, and several things came up. Uh, one of which, I asked him, I said, if, and I'm going to get to that part, two things. I said, what would your two main things be with making sure <clears throat> that we have turkeys and to help the turkey decline and get us back going. Well, the first one he said is one that's, I don't know, it's probably not too popular with deer hunters. I love to deer hunt, uh, but if you talk to biologists around the state of Georgia or anywhere, they'll tell you that at the end of the day, baiting for deer is probably not the best thing for us to do. Uh, and supplemental feeding, like on a year-round basis, <coughs> Also, not one of the best things to do, and here's why: because it concentrates predators. It's an artificial buffet. All right, sure you feed deer, and sure you feed turkeys, but you also feed coons, you also feed rats, you feed everything that comes to that, and it artificially concentrates. All right, in and of itself, not necessarily a good thing from a disease standpoint. Uh, for us hunting, it's a good thing because it keeps game on your land. But he brought up a very interesting point. He's not an anti-baiter, but what he is is this. He said, if we're going to bait deer or feed deer, let's feed something that actually grows antlers. I fed two deer, specifically four deer, that are higher in protein, put on more antler through the year, and more importantly, don't attract predators. Okay, And more importantly still, don't attract turkeys because this the whitetail cartel It's that time of year we're shooting the bow we're working on summer food plots and whatnot but this turkey thing can't wait which is why we're on episode three all right episode three after talking to my man at the wildlife center uh, he told me some very interesting things the first one of which let's stop baiting with corn all right the second one of which and this is very interesting, and we're going to go into it, so y'all stay with us, because we're going into this just right after this. All right, but I want to tell you this. If you're enjoying what we're doing, and if you want to be part of the turkey solution, hit the little bell, bing, subscribe, leave us a comment, and let's discuss this thing and get everybody, because I got so much good information from one phone call. All right. Now, the other good information was this. He worked on a private farm that he was managing that was a put-and-take quail operation. And if you don't know, put-and-take is you're setting out 
uh, semi-wild birds to hunt with dogs and you replenish them as it goes. Well, that sets up kind of a predator buffet in and of itself. So, he goes in to trap. Now, I'm going to give you exactly the way he did it because I'm going to do that as soon as we get through here. All right, but the way he did it was this. He used the have a heart traps, the live traps, boom, with the closing door. All right, you got a pan in it, it closed them in. All right, he relocated them. Not sure how he relocated them. Uh, not sure how that will happen, but they were relocated from his area. But he did it in 200 acre zones within a larger farm. All right, on 200 acres, he put out 24 have a heart traps. All right, of putting out those traps, he checked them weekly. And over the course of a year, he trapped, and I had to write this down to make sure I got it right. He trapped over 167 possums. Not coons, possums. He said he caught some coons, but the majority of what he caught were possums. All right, possums are a nest raider. All right, and we're going to get to why it's so important that we keep that in mind. And that's this. 167 over the course of a year. All right, since then, he's done that on other properties that weren't put and take quail operations, and results were very similar. So was the outcome. All right, when he removed all those possums, guess what? Yep, you had more poults the next year for the next two summers. Again, this is this man's job is to make sure that turkeys increase, quail increase, uh, that's what he gets paid for. All right? So when he tells you, yes, there was a poult increase after I removed those predators, I believe it. All right? So I went to tractor supply, I got some have hearts, and I did something else. Make sure if you're going to trap, even with have heart traps, make sure you check your local regulations to make sure you're legal. So I did something else this week that I hardly ever do. I called the game warden. Called the game warden. They were very helpful. They told me this. On private land, private land, you can remove and relocate possums with a have a heart trap as long as you don't kill them. Now there is a possum season in Georgia. Who even knew that? Getting real fired up for possum season, boys. I didn't even know there was one. All right, but there is one, but on private land. Now, that's why I say it takes everybody. I did a little quick search on the internet of private lands, and just think if we all removed possums and coons and nest raiding predators at that rate. Now, we all know the fur market has bottomed out. We know that fellows with coon dogs that people used to let run their properties now because we so much into deer hunting and feeding we don't let them run them anymore all right mistake we need to all right support your local coon hunters because coons they're abundant as well but this possum situation uh private land percentage of private land by state and i just hit a few big ones where there's a whole lot of turkeys and where the decline has happened georgia 90% private land. Missouri, 88%. Pennsylvania, 83%. Alabama, 92%. Now, if 90 to 92% of the land is privately held, who's got to take care of that? Private landowners. All right? You do it, your neighbor does it, your neighbor's neighbor does it, and guess what happens to the population? It goes up. Come with me today. We're going to set some have a hearts uh, and we'll be checking them uh, first thing in the morning. Okay, got three county line have a heart style traps, the live traps. I got beach cliff sardines. Uh, now, the good thing about these, these were 29 bucks a piece, but they come with a bonus trap, which I'll show you in just a sec. Okay, pretty simple mechanism here. 
Uh, I don't have, I will show you the top. All right, on the top, you got a little latch right here that you have to lift up. All right, you lift it up and you lift the trap door up. I don't have a tripod, so bear with me. All right, unhook the safety latch, hooked in this little latch, pan is up, bait will go in the back, the possum comes in, he pe presses the pan, caught the possum. Let's go set them. And hey, this bonus trap is showing a squirrel. That's big enough for a possum. Uh, so, in effect, I got six traps instead of three, but I'm only going to set the three big ones today. Okay, y'all might remember this from Nesting Habitat Episode 2, but put this little trap right here. Got my sardines in. Fix and take my safety latch off. Just that easy. That's set. Okay, we'll come back tomorrow and check it. I got two more to put out. All right, check this out. Yep, Bob White quail. So I'm gonna do these quail a favor because they got a nest right here. This is right next to a cutover and right next to my Chufa throwaway plot. All right, Deans are in. Trap is set. We'll come back and check you in the morning. Hey, I didn't take any extra precautions like getting rid of human scent or worrying about it because it's possums. It's not, I'm not really trying to catch coon, not really trying to catch coyote, anything like that. That's not even in season. This is just possum relocation. I got my third one set. Dean's in, trap open. This is very near a chufa plot, and it's very near where a hen nested last year. So, three traps, tomorrow we check them. We're going to find out if our turkey management's working. Come with us. All right, got a little rain moving in, not good on these electronics, but checking trap one. And, no go which actually is a good thing. Make sure my bait isn't tampered with. Nope, bait intact, trap intact, that's okay. That means we didn't have a predator right here in this area. So good. All right, we were 0 for 2, but I'll tell you what we do have, which backs up another theory. Fire ants, piles of fire ants. Now, if that were a turkey poult or a quail chick, you think they'd be on it? I do. And I also learned my dumb butt didn't take the safety catch off. I did now. We'll check them out. All right, this one is disheartening. The bait was hit, but I forgot the safety latch. Two out of three. That is a shame, but I will disengage the safety latch now. Okay, day one, struck out. One, two, three, two out of the three. I was too stupid to put the safety latch down, which I really enjoy. Uh, but next week, we will be running those traps all week. That was day one. We did have action on one bait, which means something's there. Next week, we'll be trying to catch more, and we'll start talking more quality turkey management. Hit like, hit subscribe, and listen, when you subscribe, put, leave a comment. I'm a new subscriber, or subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. Hopefully we'll have some predators in cages by next week.